Hey, babe, guess where I'm taking you today? Where are we going to go today? We're going to go out to where the oldest grapevine in the entire continent is growing still to this day. That's really interesting when you hear where we're going. And we're going to go out to the East Coast and we're going to see some beaches. Where are we going? We're going to Outer Banks, North Carolina. Put your floaties on. Here we go. Did you know that 46 million Americans plan to take an RV trip in the next 12 months? 90% of recreational vehicle owners take three or more mini vacations every year. Welcome to the RV Destinations Podcast. If it's RV travel, we're talking about it. From campgrounds to museums to national and state parks, kayaking and hiking opportunities. One of the most fun and pleasurable things you can do is just hit the road. So be ready to be inspired. Welcome in to the RV Destinations Podcast. Now your host, President Randy Beheimer and Editor-in-Chief Callie Beheimer. All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the show. We'd like to thank you for tuning in on YouTube or one of the many audio podcasts podcast platforms that we're being hosted out there on. So I got my wife over here. Callie's with us. And we also have a special guest today. Our one, our only, and our famous oh, Gwendolyn, Gwendolyn Call. Call. Famous Call. because of RVD. Aw, oh, shucks. No, you were famous before us. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I'm thinking you were. <laughs> thinking you were. But I think you made us famous. You you listened to the intro and you said, okay, we're going out to the beach. We're going out to Outer Banks. And you look behind us like, I see mountains. Maybe, right. Maybe you don't see it. So but, we, we are not we're not at um, Outer Banks. We're not we? at the beach, folks. Yep, that's we're a... still in Custer State Park. That's right. So Randy has a snazzy shirt on. I have mine in my bag over there that I purchased at the really cool gift shop over there. And uh, we just got done with a podcast with a ranger. So we're like, and Gwendolyn and our schedules all lined up. The stars aligned. And Gwendolyn's like, hey, that sounds fun. Let's do a podcast also. Yeah. Let's do it. Actually, this is the first one. That you've done next to us, isn't it? No, Ella J. First video. Yeah, it was so Ella J. Really have to behave. Yep. L E J. L E J. That, that's right. Or L J. Or Elijah. You know, whatever you want to call it. Randy says. Yep. And uh, I did have a magazine here. I gave it to the ranger that just came I in. I know. So, did but envision but, this. Isn't this beautiful? Yeah. So our Ooh, summer issue just ah. mailed. In fact, by the time this plays, you'll already yeah. have it in your hand. But and and fun fact, as you look at the front of your magazine, you see that little figure right there. That's me. That's me. What are you I gonna? Made, actually, I made the we'll, second we'll, cover. We'll have our editor please put a flash of the cover. Ready? Of, da da. Ah, there I am. There it is. Ta-da. We and call that see. mini me because yeah, I so look that, like this big under that arch. So delicate arch made the front cover mm-hmm. of the summer issue, and uh, we're still picking the fall issue, uh, the and also the winter issue. Yeah. We're going to be doing a, a cover contest uh, for one of those. Not sure yes, which one yet. I have yet to win, you know, well, editor in chief, and I've yet to make, you know, my picture on the. I mean, I'm on the cover, but a picture that I've taken has yet to make the cover. Well, what does that say? Produce some good p- photos. We'll get them <gasps> on there. They are ah. amazing, Randy ah. Beheimer. Ah. Yeah. Ha. Ha. <laughs> <laughs> right, I got my buttons out here outside. So we got Gwendolyn here. She's here. We're going to talk about Outer Banks now. This is a cool beach town. If you mm-hmm. haven't been there, I'd recommend. There's a lot of history here, too. Tons of history. Not too far from, you know, the Outer Banks. We went to see that theater, which is not on there. Yes, the Lost Colony. Lost Colonies, which was a really good show. Mm. Highly recommend it. Take a bunch of mosquito spray because yes. they're pretty bad. But that was a that was a wonderful show. Yeah, but it was. Anyway, so you want to talk about some fun facts about Outer Banks? Yes. Okay. Well, I've got them all here, and these okay. are all courtesy of southernshores.com. All right. Fun facts about OBX. Now, I've not read any of these. Uh-oh. That's always so fun. So if, there, if there's some Spanish right. words in here, I'm going to mispronounce them. Yes. I'm just we already you know that. Yeah. Everyone who listens knows that, Yes. Right? All right. So the oldest grapevine in the entire continent lives and still produces grapes to this day in Mantillo. That's uh, okay. in the Outer Banks. Either planted by Croatian natives? Cro- Cro- Croatian. Cro- 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 Croatian. Croatian. I think that's it. Croatian. Croatian. No, it's not. Cro- it's definitely not Croatian. It's okay. Croatian natives or settlers of the lost colony. This vine has been around for hundreds of years. It is believed to be the original source of the Scuppernog grapes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I pronounced that right. Watching Randy live do this is actually. Pull out your popcorn, <laughs> folks. I know. Isn't it entertaining? All right, so it's S C U P P E R N O N G. Scuppernog. 
Scuppernog grapes. I pronounced it right. Okay. I don't know We're how looking much. that up. Scuppernog. If we had a cell phone service, I totally would look it up. All right. So now let me please continue. Okay. It is believed to be the original source of the Scuppernog uh, grapes, which are so bountiful here that they're the North Carolina state fruit. So if you're from North Carolina wow. and I mispronounce that, please write it down in the comment section if you're on YouTube. If, if Phonetically you're on YouTube, spell it. Or, uh, send yeah. us an email. Send us an email to publishers at rvdestinationsmagazine.com and phonetically spell it out. But it sounds like scupper nong. See, there's a second N, so that's the I mean. Nong. 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 Uh, scupper nong grapes. I think that's right. Okay, so the next one. <laughs> one of the w- world's last remaining populations of purebred co- uh, colonial Spanish Mustangs live here. We know yes. this. We're going to talk about it. I'm going to skip over this one because this is uh, in our top 10, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, the next one is we have British soil. Who knew British ground was only Br- British ground was only 45 minute ferry right away down on uh, um, <laughs> I know the name of this island and I'm It's look- like the teacher that gets to the kid in class. I was that kid in class and it was dead silence because my maiden name Zarnecki starts with a C. So the teacher would just go I'm like, Callie Zarnecki, I'm here. Oh, poor Callie. Yeah, right? Your so, whole life. So whole it's Ocracoke, right? Ocracoke Island. Uh, I, I know, I've heard it. Ocracoke? Uh, I think, uh, I'm pretty sure, O-C-R-A-C-O-K-E. Ocracoke. We've heard of this Ocracoke. island. Ocracoke, okay. Isn't this where, I think this is where um, uh, Blackbeard it is. Uh, got killed. I, I'm pretty sure. Oh, it is. okay. You are correct. So anyway, uh, so let me finish now that I got okay. the- Okay, good um, job. So I'll tell this online, just- to you guys, not on oh, live. nobody's listening. Nobody else will listen. They, they're putting it on mute. I had to go through English twice in the seventh grade because I failed <laughs> it in the sixth grade. Does that shock you? No. Oh, honey, Aww. that makes me love you more. Actually, you just, it's so. And sweet. you didn't know this? I did not. Was it part of the intake for N- marriage? Right. It was not on the form? intake form. I I missed that part. No, I was always good in math. The whole English and prepositions and pronouns and just honey, never clicked for me. That's okay. okay. So if we're being honest. Mm-hmm. I went to an international college. I was the only American student overseas. I had to do uh, American history it, b- because they had to do it. So yeah. then I had to do it. I had the lowest grade in the class and I was the only American. Oh, man. So you're saying us as a whole or stupider? I <laughs> felt so dumb in that college. I'm just going to say it. Yep. <laughs> yeah, exactly. uh, so we're exposing our right. truths. Okay, so I'm going to call it Okra Coke because I Ocracoke. think that's that pretty close. That isn't right, but I don't know how to pronounce it. But everyone, I would keep butchering it when I was there. Yeah. But then people kept correcting me so while I was there. It's O-C-R-A Coke. I know. But it's it's something very weird. Okay, okay we're going to call it Okra Coke it's like Island Suarez. Cemetery. How about Oka? Yeah, Okie. Okay, down on the Okra Coke Island at Okra Coke Island Cemetery, there's a plot under a perpetual lease to the British Commonwealth. During World really? War II, Germany dubbed the Outer Banks Torpedo Alley as the submarine sank many vessels here. What we lacked uh, for in defense, British troops had, so they sent naval forces to help the U.S. defend itself. So, anyway, Okra Coke. Okay, interesting. That's, that's, right. that's interesting. Now I'm cold again, so Jacket's going back on. <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> it is. It's like warm, cold. Sorry, go ahead. So, so the Outer Bank, it was one of the first safe havens for enslaved folks during the during and after the Civil War. The area was known as Freedom's Land. Hatteras Island was home to the hotel. Are California. De Africa. De Africa. De Africa. It's actually De Africa. I think so. Hotel De Africa, the first safe place in the state for people escaping slavery. There was another established community on Roanoke Island where former enslaved men, women, and children lived a life of freedom called the Freedom Men's Colony. Interesting. Wow. This is getting embarrassing, actually. All right. So home to the nation's tallest lighthouse. Mm -hmm. I think I can read this one. Cape Hatteras Lighthouse is the tallest lighthouse in the United States, standing almost 200 feet in the air. What's more, this lighthouse, which is made of brick, has actually been moved from its original location due to encroaching oceans putting it at risk hmm. and we do talk about that in the we top we do oh, so I just top 10. It? yep okay. a little but it's okay it's okay. Can okay skip over it okay the birthplace of broadcasting happened here on this is crazy this is it's, it's so Cape interesting Hatters. yeah wow. Cape Hatters, the birthplace of broadcasting i would have thought like new york city maybe yeah so yeah. not only home of the first u.s weather bureau station but also the first broadcast station huh hmm since he didn't uh, maintain a scheduled time slot for transmitting weather, 
He is often overlooked as the father of broadcasting, but it's true. He did it first, and he did it here in Outer Banks. Who is he? Uh, his name is Reginald Fissenden. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to skip over that. So What's up, Reggie? <laughs> we'll just call him Reg. Reg. All right. So one last one. Um, okay. All right. So we'll do this one. Okay. However, where the Crawdad Sings novel isn't as yeah. far off. The book, which will be turning into a movie, already did, romanticized the diverse ecosystem of the Outer Banks. Mm-hmm. The nature is vividly and accurately described by a local girl who lives and breathes every aspect of the environment. This is true to the love that both locals and visitors alike have for our sandbar. Kaya, the main character, mm-hmm. represents the, the hardiness and resourcefulness of the local folk. Folk. She is strong and unwavering, even in times of adversity, which reflects the way this community weathers tough times. Uh, uh, i.e. hurricanes flooding and nor'easters okay. it's so, a good book it's anyway, a good movie too yeah they're saying that this is a i mean i'm going to summarize here they, they're saying it's basically a very accurate representation of okay you know outer banks so. i can see that it, i would i would say if you're a, a book reader like me read the book first and then watch the movie okay th- th- this actually is a good one okay we got another one folks so april 14th 1912 at 11 25 p.m the Station at Hatteras Island received the following message, message, CQD, 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 CQD. It was basically, we've hit an iceberg, and it was the Titanic. It was no. the only, only radio signal sent out that was received by land. Wow. That's actually cool. Yeah. That gave me chills. I'm glad you said that one. Yeah. That's cool. That, and that was, I mean, that was far away, and, could, and there was nothing they could do. I mean, they were so far yeah, the code said, have struck, have struck an iceberg. We are badly damaged. Titanic position, 41 degrees, 44 <sighs> minutes north, 50 degrees, 20 minutes uh, west. No other station in the U.S. are known to have received this first signal. What's interesting is that it was discovered during a restoration project. What? Officials found the document rolled up in the wall as uh. it was being used for installation. Installation. Oh! Finally located 100 years later, this was quite the find. Oh, my That's God. Cool. Isn't that crazy? Because, yeah. I mean, back back then, I mean, it was history, but it's not. It becomes more history as time goes on. So, you know, you've got, like, Bob that, you know, grabs the transcript and, like, ah, shove it on the wall. We need some insulation. You know? <laughs> and they're just not thinking. <laughs> Who that, does that? Right. Well, well Bob so did. Random. It's like the, so uh, uh, the, the the ones out in Israel that are found in the cave stuff. Oh, to, yeah. Uh, the the deep the Dead Sea Scrolls. Dead Sea Scrolls. Yeah. The, the, uh, written on papaya, uh-huh. stuffed down into and, uh, these vases in a cave. Uh-huh. Yeah. So right. what should we be saving? Pretty much everything, it sounds like. Ryan? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm full of it today. We noticed. <laughs> All right. You, All right, so I'm done mispronouncing uh, words now for the okay. evening. So, or, or more. Day. Actually, it's after what 12 day? now. It is. All right, so you want to do the top 10? Let's do the top 10. And we have all been there, so this will be fun. Uh, number 10, we're going to start with Cruise the Beach. And that was a lot of fun to do. So did you, was there like a particular part of the beach that you're like, yeah, this was really great? Or did you guys just cruise all over the place? We did a lot of cruising. So I grew up in Florida. So Daytona Beach, right? If you've ever been to Daytona Beach, it's like the thing to do is cruise up and down the beach. Yeah. Did you guys ever go for spring break? No. Not for spring break. Not for, yeah, I've never Wait, been to Daytona, okay. ironically. You haven't? No. Huh? Okay. So it's a totally different experience. So because in Daytona, it's a lot of people are pulled over. There's a lot of partying and drinking. Yeah. Outer Banks, when you hit certain areas, there's nothing there yeah. besides the beach, yep. uh, the dunes. And whatever sea life you're going to see. So for me, that was a much different experience. It wasn't as, I would say, commercialized. Right. You need to actually, the locals have a huge running joke for people who come in. You have to dial down your tires, yes. people. Yep. You will get stuck. It's not a joke. Um, and it's a big um, fee to have somebody come out uh-huh. and get you. So we obviously have a 450 dually. Because we haul our obviously. house. Obviously. <laughs> obviously. Why did I say obviously? That's not obvious, but we do. So I was super just hyper alert because I said to my husband, if someone has to come out and get a dually, oh my gosh. we're spending a lot of money. Right. Um, so dial down your tires. 
I say go somewhere where like nobody is, right? Just yeah. go and enjoy. I always say this, mornings and nights are going to be your best time. Yeah. 12 o'clock, your wildlife is, you know, away because of the mm-hmm. heat. Um, but yeah, it's it's one of the best things to do, I think. Yeah, so, so, yeah, you're right. So near like the Fort Wright area, that's kind of busy and touristy there. Mm-hmm. But when you get outside of those areas, either north or south, it gets very rural. Nobody's like, there. Right, right. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful. Sure. Down near Cape Hatteras and all that, there's not yeah, a whole there lot going on down there. Not yeah. a lot. And we'll get into it, you know, some of the seashells and sea glass. But the great part about that is you can jump in your car and go further. Yeah. Um, And you can kind of see where no one's been. The, and I'll, I'll say this later, too. But, like, the big joke was if you already see footprints, you've missed all the good shells. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Probably. It was when we were out there, you know, we had, uh, well, we still have Zoe. We had Bella at the time. She was still with us and take him out to the beach. Cause Zoe just loves the water and we're throwing the ball for her and she's running and running and running. And now it's time to go. And she literally goes out to the ocean and just sits. Oh yeah. And she's like, I'm not, I'm not coming back. And we're like, come on Zoe. And she's like, no, <laughs> I'm in my happy place. Right. Yeah. Actually, Getting back, you you spoke about dialing down your tires, uh, and what she's meaning is let air out of your tires because uh, it covers more surface. Mm-hmm. But we saw a Jeep um, uh, Rubicon get stuck yes. <laughs> in the sand just trying to get out. Yeah, so, I, I mean, saw a ton, a ton, and they. I mean, it's. I'm not talking a hundred dollars to come get you. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's like a thousand or something. They're charging yeah. because p- people aren't reading the signs. Right. <laughs> there was actually when we went to drive on the beach one of the times. There was, uh, for lack of a better term, almost like a, a beach ranger there and was like, you need to air down your tires now. Yes. We're like, we were going to do that. And yeah. she's like, do it now. Yeah. And they have d- what you call uh, dial down stations mm-hmm. before you get on the beach. So pretty close to getting on that sand, you can kind yeah. of pull over and do it. So. And then don't worry, because on your way out, you can air them back up at those same exactly. places. Yep. Yep. Yeah, so that's really cool, because most uh, East Coast uh, beaches don't allow you to drive no. on. Texas is Texas a big... Texas does. Yeah, Texas yeah. is a big state that allows you to drive pretty much up and down mm-hmm. any of their beaches. And so it's really nice to see here on the East Coast that you can do that. Yep. Maybe not here on the East Coast. So while you're out driving around on the beach, hit up number nine, which is shell and sea glass hunting. Did you, what did, do you guys find sea glass? Because I did not uh, find the sea glass. We did. Oh. So we did a whole home study unit on this, uh, the sea glass. And in fact, if you are just interested in history, it was super interesting that based on color, mm-hmm. size, um, how worn it was will tell you what kind of bottle it was. You can even drill down to like the time frame. So the really? 1920, yes, if it was actually a bottle or if it was from a shipwreck. Um, and then based on colors, like pink and purple are super rare to find. Oh, wow. So the kids, we, and, and it wasn't just the kids, I'm being honest. I loved it. I got obsessed with it. Um, we found a ton of sea glass. And the the old tale is sea glass is actually mermaid tails. Yes. Or I'm- mermaid tears, excuse me. Um, and then we found a great white shark tooth. No we way. Me. And that was like the find. And when I looked it up, they're actually extremely rare to find. So the one that we found was valued at about two hundred and fifty dollars. Oh, oh wow. my yeah. god! So it was, a, it was like such. It was it was really cool. Um, and that goes to what I was saying in the first one. If you have already seen footprints, someone's already been out there and um, coming. Near yeah, you. the trick is, guys, when you're walking, you're not looking straight down. You're looking about five feet ahead, and you're looking for the little shimmer. Yeah. Uh, and then don't discount like the seaweed. Because a lot of it will get stuck in that seaweed so you can find it. Um, And here's another thing that we learned on all this study for this. Unfortunately, because our whole world has gone to plastic, guess what's going to happen? The price of sea glass and the rarity of sea glass. It's going to become super rare. So um, Outer Banks is known for the sea glass. And I'm assuming you guys may already know this. Do you? No, why? No. Oh, because of all of the shipwrecks. Shipwrecks. And because it's, it's very, one of the most dangerous shores, right, isn't it? It is. Um, the shipwrecks and then the way that the waves tumble there. So we have found sea glass everywhere. Now it's our thing, but it won't be as tousled, so it won't have that sea glass look. Yeah. So it really has to go. And I'm not talking about for six weeks. I'm talking about for six years or so. Yeah. The more it tumbles, the smoother it is. That is so cool. I, had I could go on forever on this one. We really dug into this. This was one of the coolest things. Things. That is so neat. And it's F-R-E-E. Right. Which is, I mean, so much better. So far, I well, mean, cruising be on the beach. It could be rewarding, yes. a $250 tooth. I'm not selling that thing. I was, I picked it up and I was like, oh, this is cool. I'm going to look it up. 
And then when I looked it up, I, in fact, great whites are one of the rarest ones to find. Wow. Everything's for sale. Everything has true, a price tag. True, true. So if you want it, drop in the comments below on YouTube. There you go. Exactly. <laughs> I'm, I'm Matt, we're going to start a bidder. bidding war. All nice. right. So number Jokes. eight, good Lordy May. Oh, okay. let's hear you. Come on. Come All on, right. this pronunciation. Chica. Ma comico. Tamika Miko. I think that's pretty right, though. Uh, right. Chica oh, Maca Now you're going to agree with her. Well, Chica I mean, you know. How about let's just say the life saving station? Life saving station. Yeah. So the Chica Maca Miko, life saving station. And it, we, we saw that, never got a chance to do it. Um, and it looked, it looked really, really interesting. And it's been there for a long time. Uh, well, that, the life saving portion of right, it has been right. around. No, you're correct. This you're is, correct. And this is about like the shipwrecks, right? Yeah, so I had no idea that this even existed. I had no, literally no idea what it was. Um, but while on the Outer Banks, because we homeschool mm -hmm. or road school, I looked it up and I, as soon as I started digging into the website, I was like, oh, this is super cool. We need to find this out. So back like in the 1870s, um, these were just strictly volunteer men, right? Mm -hmm. And what I found interesting was it went all the way up to the 1950s. Wow. Which guys isn't, really that, that long ago. No, right? it's not. Um, so they literally risked their lives to go out and save the shipwrecks. Wow. And to your point, Callie, this is heavily shipwreck area. Yes. Um, the artifacts they had, the boats they had, the stories about the shipwrecks, um, all the recovery. It was really cool. That's really yeah. neat. It was, it was really cool. And what we ended up finding was there was a lot of these stations throughout the Outer Banks. Mm -hmm. So you can go see other ones. Yeah, we saw we the, the ship uh, wrecked down. That was in Hatteras, I believe, or maybe a little bit uh, south of yeah, Hatteras. Yeah, it was at the at the kind of the bottom. You know what's so cool about that is they had a lot of Blackbeard's actual artifacts. They did. And they don't, what they say, they didn't post on their website or something because they didn't want people to kind of know who was there, honestly. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's kind of, they won't allow you to take pictures of no, it. No, you cannot. You, it's It's all... It, that, that area is kind of like locked down. You cannot take pictures. You can pictures. Take, take pictures everywhere else yeah, in the museum, not but that. not in uh, Blackbeard's section. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, these men, they'd get the, the signal and they would go out into the water mm -hmm. in these little dinghy boats to try to save people. Isn't that nuts? And then what's Crazy. like interesting, like in, in Key West, they did the whole ship salvaging or like Randy calls scalvaging. Um and, and they kind of went out with a more sinister purpose, but they would go out and it's like, oh, sorry, looks like you're not going to make it. We're just going to claim all of this Absolutely. for ours. Yeah, so yeah. there was some, going on there too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was some information on that too. But yeah, really neat. They had oh, one piece that stuck out to me was a door on a boat and it was just this beautiful wooden door with stained glass. And it got wow. me thinking how you know, bougie and upscale. Right. And these ladies were dressed to the nines on oh, their yeah. boats. Traveling and, across the oceans. Yeah. And here we are in our flip flops and floaties. Oh, I'm <laughs> excited if I see somebody not in their pajamas in public now. Amen. <laughs> you know? All right. Number seven is eat the local food. Yes, 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 yes. Do you, do you have a favorite place that you guys happened upon while you were there? You know, I don't really, well, all right, let me back up. Not really. I thought all the seafood was great, but did you guys notice there was a plethora of donut shops? Do you remember that? Yeah, I actually yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Kind of unusual. It's so random. So duck donuts. Okay, I do remember that one. Yeah. yeah. So grab yourself a donut if you like donuts. Um, they do close early. That's another thing. Anything on this island, they close when they want to close. Yes. So don't be, we're eating at five o'clock. Everyone get ready. You better call and make sure they're going to be open. It's yeah. kind of like we're going to be open when we want to be open. Um, I Island think, life, right? Yeah, right. exactly. I mean, literally, that is what it was. Um, everything was good. The pizza, mm -hmm. the seafood. But yeah, check out the duck donuts. Yeah, we, we ate at, uh, is it Tortuga Lies? I think it was Tortuga Lies. Oh, yeah, that Lies. was so good. And that yeah. was really, really good. Just a we small got, little place. Yeah, it, it looks tiny like tiny place. You would question yourself going in there, like, why are we going yeah. in here? And the food was really good. I forgot all about that yeah, place. Yeah, we had to wait for a while just to get a place to open at the bar. I mean, and I'm talking, what, there was maybe 30 tables or less in this place and then bar space. Um, and we were able to sneak in at the bar and, and sat up there and ate. Best place. I know. Those are the best ones. Food was yeah, delicious. It was, a whole, it was definitely a hole in the wall, but it was it was amazing. I forgot about that. I got a shirt from there. I still wear it. In fact, yes. I've got in the RV right now. Oh, uh, yeah. I think you actually, I just got a, a food stain out of it. So it's back in your closet and good to wear again. 
perfect. You are I can't, exposing I Randy. I can't believe yeah. you keep putting food on my shirts. I, it, it is me. I mean, I'm a sloppy totally eater. I, I do talk with my hands and eat with my hands. Food's flying everywhere. and Yeah. I know. All right, I'm moving on. To, we need a button over here. Right? I control. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm the button controller. He's the driver. He is the driver. Speaking about Speaking driving. Speaking of driving, drive the National Seashore. Um, you know, and that's what we talked on a little bit before briefly, but there's, what, 70 miles of drivable beaches up and down that seashore. Um, and then you and us as a photographer great place to go for photography. Absolutely. Yeah. So driving the beach is one thing. And and I kind of questioned writing both of these. So cruising the beach is one thing, but there is a actual area that is the national seashore. Yeah. And guys, if you are RVing, RV lifing, and you are doing the national parks, if you're not, guys, get your book and get yes. your stamps. It is so fun. It is fun. It's so fun. And it becomes, I mean, if you're competitive like me, it's like, how many can we get? Yeah. But I didn't even know this, guys. The National Seashore is part of the National Parks. Oh, yeah. So you can get your stamp. Mm-hmm. Um, you can go in there. There's a junior ranger program there. So all of you parents out there or adults, because anybody can do the yes. junior ranger program. Um, and to Callie's point, it is 70 miles of this national seashore. And I believe it's the first one. It is. Yeah. It's the first in the country. So definitely That's, a must do. Yeah. And isn't it uh, the junior ranger program is F-R-E-E free. Super free. Which and is And it's great. amazing. We've learned, and I say this, so if you listen to me on here, it's... It's redundant, but we have learned so much. Mm -hmm. We've gained so much knowledge from this Junior Ranger program. Our um, thing is we always buy something at the National Park kind of to give back because the program is free. Yeah. So, and it's great. If you're road schooling your kids and you're not taking advantage of that, um, it's another teacher too, right? It is. Absolutely. My my kids are sick of me at some point. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Randy's laughing. (laughs) <laughs> so I was just thinking we did we actually covered Outer Banks in the magazine. We did. I can't I tried to pull it up on my phone. I couldn't find the issue. So yeah. so our editor is going to put it right here. Yeah. It's an so issue blah blah, issue, blah blah blah. So blah, that blah, issue blah. if you want to go back cuz well, the reason I was saying that is you were talking about the photographer's paradise. Some of yes. my favorite shots that I've taken uh, a couple years ago where I, I mm-hmm. kind of do a roundup of the year like my favorite shots of the year. A couple of those shots made it. There there's a pier. We got some great shots yes. of the pier. Uh, but I can't remember what issue. We'll put that down there if you want to go check it out and read more in detail on Outer Banks. Yeah, because it, what's cool is what you enjoyed as your top 10 and what we wrote about in the magazine. There's a couple things that overlap, but there's a lot of differences, too, because there's that. so much to do in the area. Abs- oh, yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So number five is the Cape Hatteras Lighthouse. And Randy touched on this in the intro. And it is the tallest brick lighthouse in North America. Honey, do you remember how tall you said it was? 200 feet? 200 feet. 200 200 feet. That's a whole lot of feetage. It really is. (laughs) A whole lot of footage. It's a whole lot of feetage. Um, Yeah, this was amazing. So I know a lot of you who travel and listen are lighthouse people. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say I'm a lighthouse person, but I know there's a thing. I mean, there's people who literally go just for lighthouses. Super impressive. Randy kind of stole the thunder a little bit, but he was correct. So the waters were encroaching Mm -hmm. and they literally moved that whole entire lighthouse brick by brick, like the actual structure. There was nothing added, nothing lost. They were able to move the whole entire thing. And when you go through the visitor center and all of that, they go through how they did it. And it was really interesting. Is, um, is that the black and red striped one? The red and one? white black one, yeah. Okay, yep, Red, okay. white, and black. It's gorgeous. Yep, I do remember that. We Because we did one of the days... See that, picture here. Yeah, see picture there. See, <laughs> ooh, ah. Because uh, one of the days that we were there, uh, we did a lighthouse tour. Cause, because oh, I know yes. that there's a big interest in that. So we hit probably... Four of them, I want to say. One of them we went back to at night, and Randy did some nighttime photography with a lighthouse in the background. I need to see that photo. Yeah. It's in the magazine. Mm -hmm. Uh, Oh, wow. um, Actually, I'm kind of thinking that isn't that lighthouse, wasn't that the cover of that issue? We, oh, we put yes, on so many magazines. it is. No, you have a cover with a lighthouse. So if it's the cover of the lighthouse, I, 
No. I'll, I'll, okay. okay, maybe not. I, we, I, I have, we have no way of looking this up because we have no cell phone service. Except for I have a picture of all the covers yeah. of the magazine, so, so I might look when you're talking. Okay, it, perfect. It, yeah, if you if you come out to pull Custer, Randy. If you come out to Custer State Park, <laughs> know that you're going to have zero phone zero service. service. Which is perfect. Disconnect. It's, right, it's a blessing. It's amazing. But our editor is going to save us by putting what issue uh, right, that was the in issue right down is here. Running right across, the, we're all somewhere, pointing. Somewhere it's down all, here. It's all down there, so but, just yeah. go down below. Yeah, so definitely check out the lighthouses. Oh, yeah. One, one other thing. Oh, yes. So that museum that had Blackbeard stuff in it yeah. had a top of one of the lighthouses. It remember that did. got uh, they f- sold it or something? I don't remember the story. No, a story they there. found it like in, in storage. New York or so, storage. Yeah, it was in random. in some random place in storage. And but this was like the original lighthouse, like, like original, the first one ever made. Uh, it, it, was, it was like cool. the top of it with like the original, some of the original glass pieces, and they found it somehow. And you're right, it was someplace totally random, um, and were able able to salvage it and discover what it actually was, so and then cool. brought it back to where it may, belonged. May, maybe the story because I have some disconnects here. I, uh, I think they found it locally, and then they shipped it to New York back to the glassmaker or the manufacturer. Oh, maybe that was it. Got it all redone and brought it back to the museum. I think it might have been maybe, something like that. Maybe, yeah. We may be slightly off on that. We Just have no read way the to article. There's, I think there's information in the I article. Great the, reason to get the magazine. The, the last thing about the lighthouse is yeah. it has the National Junior Ranger Program also. Oh, nice. Okay, so your kids can get a badge there. And then if they're doing the seashore one, it's interchangeable, so you can do both of the booklets at that lighthouse. And the lighthouse was beautiful. Pack a picnic, go for the day, walk yeah. around. Um, they had the lighthouse keeper's home still there and intact. Do you remember that? Yes, it, I do. Which I yeah. love going through old homes. I do too. I'm like it's weirdly so weird. fascinated by it. I'm always weirdly fascinated that, you know, Britain, my husband is six six yeah. and the doors are like for These... five foot four people. Right. Um, because I guess we were just tinier. Mm-hmm. Um so yeah, the there there's a lot to do there. You could spend a good half of a day. Yes, for sure. All right, number four is kite surfing. Yes. Did you do this? Absolutely not. Okay. <laughs> I was like yeah, that's not my cup of tea. It is not my cup of tea because I'm always like, how do you get back? Right. Like, you how? ride the kite back. But what like, if the wind's not going that way? Right. And you just keep going further Who's and further to out. Get you? Now it, I'm this statistic. It's like a balloon, hot air balloon ride. You don't know where you're going. You just set exactly. out and go. That's now why I'm not sudden, doing I'm in, one. Right. Now I'm in Panama. Okay. And how do I get home? Bad analogy. Let me give you a better one. How do sailboats know how to get back to the shore? They have well, a motor. They flip their sails around. And they, they have flip a motor. Their sails around. And they that's have a how, motor. They don't use it if they're a purist. But. True, 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 true. Um, I did not kite surf. However, where we stayed, which was the KOA mm-hmm. Outer Banks, yep, um, which was such a great spot, you had you were on one side of the water and then the other side of the water, which yep. was really cool. And we spent hours watching these kite surfers. Yeah. It was so fun to watch. Um, there's all different types of outfitters there. So they will come, they'll meet you, they'll bring you all the gear. And yeah, if you're adventurous and that's your jam, go for it. Absolutely. Absolutely. It yeah. looked it looked really cool. Yeah. Not I've, for me. Not just for not me. cool enough for you to get up yeah. and do it. No. And I I'm, mean, I'm with you on that one. Like, it looks cool. I've seen it done. But I am at that point in my life where I'm like, yeah, it's going to hurt. It's yeah. just going to oh, hurt. Yeah. yeah. It's definitely hurting. Yeah. And I just, I don't want to hurt. <laughs> would you do it, Randy? Totally would. Of course yeah, he would. He would. Let's he absolutely would. It. Okay. So Outer Banks. Kite surfing outfitters, drop us in the comment. Yeah. We're going to hook Randy yes. up. We'll, we'll come out and videotape it and do everything, promote you through the podcast and our magazine. You, you just, just got to get yeah. that guy get, out there. Get me out there. Get me out there. I'll come be a, an advertisement for your uh, outfitting company. I feel like this has to happen It's going to happen. <laughs> it's going right, to so happen. on to number three. Deep, I haven't done this either. No, deep sea fishing. Uh, yeah. Ever? You've never done it? Never. No. So fun. And you want, you want to know why. Okay, so growing up, to spend time with my dad, my dad fished. Yeah. And it was sitting there for hours on end, just waiting for the end of the bobber to go boop and then grab the pole and the fish ate off the bait and, and, you wa- there. and nothing. But and that's I, lake fishing. That's good in the know. deep sea fishing. Yeah, totally different. So growing yeah. up in Florida, lots of deep sea fishing tours. Um, Here's the thing. I, I hate to blow it for everyone. They're taking you where you're going to catch big fish. Yeah. Like, of course. Yeah. They're doing it, right? Be a so bad captain if yeah, you didn't. Right. So they're going to take you out. Um, if you get seasick, probably not the thing for you to right. do. Um, 
a little adventure, right? Some of them go 10 miles out. So, you know, if that makes you nervous to not see the shoreline, mm-hmm. it's not for you. Uh, but if you like that thrill of catching something and reeling it in and maybe hunting's not your thing, um, you know, the deer or something, right. th- it's really fun. They bring you back. You They clean the fish for you. You got to take it home. Some of them, they'll actually cook it there for you. Oh, perfect. So that's like, that's just super cool. It is. Um, and I think if you have a lot of time there, it's something you should do for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Thrilling, exciting. It's it's definitely an adventure thing. Yeah. Babe, didn't... No, wait. Uh-uh. You and Jay, when we were in South Padre Island... That wasn't deep sea fishing. Oh, it wasn't? No, oh, no, okay. No, that was, was that just little fishing? That was, yeah, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I, I actually remember- have done it, but I was a kid. I was like... Oh, gotcha. Don't remember much. But I, re- I remember sitting on the boat and, you know, while we were going out, and that was a lot of fun as yeah. a 12 year old. Oh, yeah. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Um, but if you get seasick or you don't want to be far out where you can't see the shore, it, it's not going to be for you. Right. It is an all day thing, guys. So be prepared that you're going out there, you are fishing. Um, and if you're with a group of people, if you decide like me, I don't really want to do this anymore. You're, you're there. You're so, there for the day. Yeah. And- but people who fish, um, did you guys notice this? The trucks had the fishing poles on the oh, front. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So random. Yeah. So for everyone listening, it would be like a truck or a car. Yeah. And they had their fishing poles on the front. Mm-hmm. It almost felt like a safety hazard to me. So it'd be the front of the car with like 10 poles. Yeah. Um, it is all fishing. It's uh, the men going down there to do fishing tours. Like that is where you go. Yeah. You're so silly. <laughs> what? How long oh. were you waiting to do that? I don't know what you're talking about. Yes. He's, and oh, then he gets that little buttons. grin on his face. We're going to get buttons. We need I'm buttons. Send you I need a button, a button to pull out of your pocket. Like, <laughs> right. Meh. Meh. All right, we're moving down to number two. And this, everybody, 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 even if you're not a pilot, you should do this. Because it was so, so fun. This is where cool. the birthplace of flight. Right. Now, think about that. The birthplace of flights. That means every military aircraft, every commercial aircraft, every pilot, Every time you get in a plane started. to go on vacation, guess what? It's right. because of these guys right here. And that's the Wright Brother National Park. Super cool. Oh, it was so cool. Yeah, it was so going, fascinating. Yeah, going back to the National Park thing, guys, if you're if you're uh, trying to do RVing or destinations and collect those, you've got three in one area. Yes. So that's super cool. And to Randy's point, it doesn't even matter if you don't like to fly or you... It's just so interesting. It is. Um, learning about how it kind of started with a bicycle. Yeah. And yeah, it's re- it, It's one of the coolest national parks. Mm-hmm. Now, obviously, it's not like a Yellowstone. Right. Or, you know... Um, you know, like Glacier. It, it's But it's one of the coolest, I think, for history-wise, uh, things to see. So, yeah, it, so it, one of the coolest things, and, and I read a big book about uh, the Wright brothers. I, I wish I could remember the name of it. If I can remember it and get it to Bo, we'll put it down here in the, in the right below here. But it was an amazing book, and it talked about the whole history. And so what you see at the museum is you see the hill where they started mm-hmm. with the first drafts of a plane, and they're basically just gliders. And they'd take a run and they'd run. And so there's markers where each plane yeah. landed and they started developing it better and better and getting further mm-hmm. and further. And every year they might get a little bit further. But they lived in Day- yeah. Dayton, Ohio, and they would take by, by um, I don't think, well, they didn't fly. <laughs> <laughs> they took trains uh, out to somewhere. They took in, a quick flight a quick from flight. Dayton, Ohio. <laughs> they took an air balloon. Um, no, they took a train from Dayton all the way out to somewhere in North Carolina. And then they had to get aboard this like rinkety, uh, uh, like uh, rowboat kind of thing. Yeah. And they had to row for like two or three hours to get out to yeah, the Outer it, Banks. It, because the Outer Banks, again, is an island that is detached right. from the mainland. And back then, there, there weren't the roads that everybody just right. takes for granted. But they, they started by building this hangar and then they yep. got bigger and bigger and they just kept going out there because the, the, there's a lot of wind. There's the so banks. much wind. They were committed. Yeah. And that spot, I was going to talk about that too. But of course, Randy stole my thunder. Yeah. But they did have Mark. Mm-hmm. And then they had the time for how long yep. they were in flight. Yep. So the kids, we timed the kids running it. And then the kids timed us running it, which was really fun. But you're right. You can see how far they went for, I yeah. think it was the first three or yeah, four. Think, mm-hmm. Yeah, you're right. I it can't was, remember if it was three or four, but it's three or four. One super other. cool. Yeah, super it, was, cool. it was so neat. And and what I like too is that uh, some of it is very drivable. So for yes. folks that... 
you know, are physically challenged where they just can't get out and walk a lot of this, you can drive a lot of it and see the hill where they launched uh, the the first aircrafts from. I like calling them aircrafts, the little glider aircraft. And then they have a museum. We didn't go because we had the dogs with us or and something. And it didn't was we? it was COVID, so it was still oh, that's there was, what it was they had a lot of rules around that, and we the had the dogs with us. Awesome, yeah, though. yeah. The museum was awesome. The wealth of history and knowledge, and I felt you know sometimes you go to these and you're like, oh, it's like a book to read yes. through all this. This was very picture, short little blurbs. You got That's the nice. you you got it, and then a lot of hands on different aeronautical things. Yeah, so you could really see and touch, and um, it was great. It was just it was one of the coolest ones I think. Yep, and I had no interest in doing it. Yeah, really. Not really. It's kind of like Mount Rushmore now that we're here now. And we just went the other day and I was like, oh, this was so cool. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And it, it wasn't on my list. I'm terrible so. about that, too. I'm like, I she'll know. be like, let's go. Like, like we did that. We did a um, a kayaking uh, out in. It was um, uh, Wilmington. Wil- Wilmington. We yeah. Did a and he and it was like, did it was like, not want to do this. It's 14 miles. I'm like, yeah. I don't want to work that hard. And you're like, it's going to be going down. To I'm like, like, we're going to be going through the swamps. I'm like, we're going to go to places that you cannot get go, to right. at all. Period. That's Ever. it. Right. And we did it. And it was amazing. It was amazing. I really had a great time. And I'm like, I'm so glad. You know, because you get, you, get, I know. you mm-hmm. know, you get a perception in your mind and you just build it up that that's the way it's going to be. Right. And so let that be a lesson to everybody, including ourselves. You know, get out there and push your envelope. Yes. You know, get out there and do things you're not used to doing because you, you may might be, be surprised. surprised right? Yeah, right. you may be surprised. It's like the National Monuments. And I'm going to make Randy let me do a podcast on that at some point. But these National Monuments rival our National Parks, oh, yes. guys. It's Yes. It's insane. Don't discount them if you are traveling, if you have the National Park book. By the way, we don't work for the National Parks, but man, no. we, are plugging, I know. we are plugging them hard. Right? But in your book, it shows all the National Monuments. Mm-hmm. I will tell you some of our best memories, best footage, best everything has been in a monument. Mm-hmm. So... All right, so we're moving on to number one. Are we ready for number one? Now, yes. Well, I, I am going to leave it with a caveat okay. here, and the caveat is we're going to do a separate podcast on this experience on in great in great detail. So we're just going to do high level stuff right now. But yes, if we're ready for number one, we're let's ready. do it. Two hundred and fifty strands of light. Drum roll, please. And the number one thing to do in the Outer Banks is go to Corolla Beach. Yes. Of course. And why do we want to go to Corolla Beach? Horses. The wild horses. The federally protected. I know. That was great. Do that, do that again. That was great. <laughs> <laughs> of course, it would make that sound on sand. Right. No, it's kind of oh, like true, whoosh, 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 true, true, yeah. and it is all sand. It is. Now these are federally protected. Do not touch, get near, or feed the horses. I'm right. just gonna say that, folks. Okay, so leave the horses alone. Yeah, but. There are tours you can do. You can go out and venture by yourself. Uh, Sometimes just driving on the beach, we happen to see one, but you spent a specific amount of time there. And again, we're not going to dig in too much. We're going to save for the next one. But if you want to know more, you should get the fall issue that just happened. Was it Uh, fall? The special edition. Oh, special edition. edition. Special edition. Can we still get that? Uh, Uh, We have a limited supply. Very limited supply. You could get it on digital. Uh. No, you can't. Aww. It's print the only. Part of I know. Gwendolyn. Well, because uh, okay. Gwendolyn, that picture is it's showing up right now. That's Gwendolyn's it's picture. Showing up. It's showing up. So we yeah. ordered we ordered enough to hopefully fulfill the the special edition volume two. We put out one edition every year. This is mm-hmm. a good way. This is our special. If you're special, not a subscriber, special. try this out. Get a feel for what we're like. But we we ordered enough to to last until December. That we was thought. the plan. And. <laughs> We're almost sold out. Yeah, they're too they're, popular. It's June right now. The, it's June and we're almost sold out. It's we, wildly popular. So if you want your own copy, because seriously, there's not that many left, rvdestinationsmagazine.com forward slash subscribe. Right. And, and, we, and we look will for that take there. The, we, we won't take down the button, but we're going to put a not like available. Like a sorry sold out. Right. You got to wait for we next do year. Sell out, but yeah, you'll have to wait till uh, uh, spring of next mm-hmm. year before we roll out volume three. Okay. But. So I won't push it too hard, but yeah, I will keep this high level, but it is probably the best thing to do. Whether you like horses or you don't, there's something about seeing them in the wild and their natural element right. that is completely and utterly breathtaking. Um, on the next top 10. So you better 
join when I'm on again. Yes. I will dive deeply into how do you see them? Mm-hmm. It is not, hey, you're going to go and you're going to definitely see them. Right. The analogy I like to use is it's like finding little Easter eggs, right? Mm-hmm. So you're not going to just drive down and they're going to be there. Um, I'm going to end up sharing what mile marker even you should stay at. Mm-hmm to be able to see these guys. But yes, Corolla, it's 14 miles of beach and you are literally on the beach, guys. There's no street. There's no street lights. You are on the beach going to see these horses. Yeah. So you need, you absolutely need a four-wheel drive vehicle. That, yes. That's not even a negotiable. Four-wheel drive vehicle, yes. you got to air down to. your tires. Yes. And you got to be able to, you got to know your vehicle because you will get stuck. As she said, yeah. you know, there are areas that it's really firm and you're fine, but then you get these deep ruts where. Oh, and it's just, it's just powdery sand and yeah. you right. cannot grip in powdery sand. And don't be fooled that you need four wheel drive beefy truck. Cause in fact, our truck was worse because we're so heavy. Yes. And you so sink more. I'm saying like four wheel drive, a little Subi. Yeah. And if you want to see it, guys, people rent cars all the time to get out there. Right. So don't not go because you don't have the right vehicle. And, there's tour and they companies, tours. Right? Yeah. They uh, yeah. Do there's tours. a ton of tour companies. So if you're, and, and again, we'll go into this again, but if you're out there for a day, you need to do a tour if you want to see the horses. They know where they're going. And in fact, we hijacked a tour a little bit and followed them just a little bit to see where they were going. I'm sure that's a no no. Sorry, tour guides. But. Um, so we could see, so that was good, but they know exactly where they're yeah. going. They know where the herd is. They're going to take you to those right spots. So book a tour. If you're there for a couple days, do it on your own. Yeah, for right? sure. You're alone. You can go on your own time. It's a little bit more relaxed. So, but yes, definitely that would be the number one thing. I know that there is horses, um, off of the banks of Georgia. Mm-hmm. This is wild horses, guys. This isn't you can walk up and give them a carrot and an apple. Right. No, Mm -mm. can't do it. Totally different scenario. Yeah. Well, and Gwynland did it kind of different. They actually, they're full-time RVers. They'd left their RV and actually stayed in a a cabin or a house, didn't you? Yes, we did. So we were at the uh, KOA Outer Banks. Again, KOA is not paying this. No, we're going to mention them because that's where we stayed as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So we left it there. It was an hour drive. And Mm -hmm. then we rented an Airbnb. And in the next podcast, or if you get this special edition, yeah. I, d- I do, guys. I, sh- I really share tips that I wouldn't typically share, which is what mile marker even you need to get your house at, right? The right. inside scoop. You're it is the, I know. It's totally the inside. I put it this way. I would have paid money for somebody to have told me that because we were there, you know, maybe four days. I was writing an article outside of what I did for RVD. I was working for the tourism board, and I'm like, I- I've got to see these. I'm not going to see them. Holy crap. And yeah. So you get panicked when you're there that you want to see them. So right, right. Mm-hmm. Kelly and I only saw one. We drove we around for about two or three yes. hours, and we only saw, saw one. One, and, yep. and that that's in the article in the standard quarterly edition that Correct. is is available by digital. So you can go back and look at that. Yeah. Uh, but you know, the, the Outer Banks is such a cool town, it and, is. and there's Agreed. so many other things. Uh, you know. That museum we talked about that has Blackbeard stuff and all that, that was a great museum. I really, really enjoyed that museum. That's more of a shipwreck museum where the one we talked about, I think, was more about them saving the shipwrecks. So it's more geared towards that. But but also there's, you know, there's, um, it's kind of a tourist town around uh, uh, the... Wright Brothers. Yes, it yeah. is. But what it is that is. town? I'm trying to think of that town. It's, it's uh, Kitty Hawk. Kitty Hawk. Kitty Hawk. Yeah, so Kitty Hawk it is somewhat touristy, but again, you get outside of there. North or south, and it just, you get these just super quaint, cute, sweet little beach towns. Very you know, remote with, feeling. Very remote yeah. feeling. You know, with like, you you know that you're in with the locals and their vacation rentals and the cute little um, ice cream shop and you know, places like that. And it was just very sweet. And it's, yeah. a, it's about, I think it was about a hundred miles from the north side to the south side. So it, it's a, it's a long skinny yes, island. It is. So the north side's where Corolla beach is. And in the south side's kind of where Her- Her- Hatteras. Hatteras, thank you, mm-hmm. is, but that's a, if it's not exactly a hundred miles, it's somewhere close. Um, mm-hmm. Now, as far as getting around, you're definitely going to need your vehicle. This yes. is not something you'll be able to walk. Um, you know, maybe if you get into Kitty Hawk, you can walk around, but Really not so much. There's actually some uh, dunes that you can go up. We yep. climbed up the dunes, and there's a lot mm-hmm. of different dunes you can do. But uh, we also, I want to plug the KOA because I think it's a great KOA. It's we a stay beautiful there too. KOA. And one thing I want to mention to folks that we didn't know at the time when we booked KOA is not all of the sites are full hookup. So, like, we had a water electric 50-amp site, 
but no sewage. But they did offer pump out. So I love we when just, they do that. Yes. So we just scheduled. You just schedule with them. They come over. They pump you out. You're good to go. Because I get a little panicky because, you know, we tend to not pack as much because I'm doing laundry all the time in the RV. Same. And then I'm like, oh, my gosh, I can't dump. What am I going to do? I need to do laundry. And then they're like, oh, no, no, no. We do dump out service. You can do it literally as much as you want. And I'm like, oh, OK. I mean, there's a small fee for it, but right. that is available. Well, that care was really nice. It had a real nice pool, if you remember. Oh, the and pool was incredible. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We, we actually it, featured them in that same mm-hmm. issue, the Outer Banks. So they, I think yeah. they comped our stay a couple nights or something mm-hmm. like that. But, but yeah, that was a, and again, that's not why I'm telling you to stay there because they comped our stay, but it was really a nice it, place. But I stayed there too, so. Yeah, and they didn't caught my stay. <laughs> so um, and the other thing, guys, if you're traveling with kids, we were there in October, and we were there for Halloween. Which, if you're a, oh, if you're yeah. a parent and you're in RV life, you're shaking your head right now, watching me talk, going, "Yep, the holidays are important." And they are. They had one of the best trick or treating um, that I, I can't even begin to tell you. And then off of one of the piers, and I and I don't know if I can find it. Maybe Bo can add that in. Bo's gonna have a lot to do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> one of the actual marinas. You could walk down the piers and all the boats were decorated. It was insane. And they were giving out candy from the boats to the point where some of them had fishing poles and they were like sending the fishing pole over to the kids. So you walked on the dock and they were handing out candy. They were all in like these amazing costumes and theme, like the little mermaid and under the sea and pirates. So how fun. Yeah. If you're looking for a spot and also the weather was Fantastic. Yeah. It was just so beautiful. So, yep, yep. and uh, it was off season. Yeah. Even better. Less so, people. Less people, less money. Um, and, and yeah, it was, it was awesome. So that was a really good, a good spot for the holiday. Yeah. And like Callie, Callie and I mentioned this earlier. Sorry, we're getting the wind blowing I know, here. And now I know I'm getting cold again. Annoying. So go see the Lost Colony too. It, you know, it was a great play. We really enjoyed it. Did you guys get to see the Lost Colony? We didn't. Colony? We didn't. Okay. We, we really enjoyed that it play. Was that really hashtag good. kids. Yeah. Re- yeah. <laughs> we could take the kids. It just costs more. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah. Hashtag kids. Again, my point. No, I'm just joking. But we also, you got you got uh, Ocracoke Island, which I, I do think that, the more I'm saying that, the Maybe more that sounds right. right. I think he is this um, time. You I'm kind of proud of him. Immediately. You can actually take a boat out there as well. And uh, I think there's some really cool things to do out there. We haven't done it, but my brother lives in that yeah. area and he's done it. And he said it's pretty cool. So. It's amazing. So you can take a boat out to it. Um, right when we were there in October, uh, so it was before uh, Halloween. Again, if we figure this out, we'll put it up. They have an island, like a Gasparilla. So a pirate island takeover where the pirates come in from the ships. Um, they've got music and food and festival. And you can be there while the pirates kind of show up and take over. And Aww. they have a huge parade. That yeah. is so cool. All so right, so we ha- we have no internet, so we can't tell you all about the campgrounds, but I will tell you there's quite a few. There's quite a few. They do book up very far in yes. advance. I think we had to uh, book our reservation in the KOA like eight months in advance. Yeah, it was, like it was it was it was. But out again, there. off season, guys. If right. you're just getting into RV life, I cannot. I cannot scream enough. Well, maybe we don't want to scream enough because we don't want people. Then to it do gets it. booked. Uh, mm. But off season, I mean, October was still beautiful. We were still swimming. Yeah. It, it's off season is some of the best times to go places. So, mm-hmm. yep, yep. yep. So you can check out rvlifecampgrounds.com and, and they'll tell you all about the different mm-hmm. campgrounds in the area and, and rate them all. Right. That's what we use most shows. Most of you that listen know that. It's again, we just have no internet. So we have <laughs> I nothing know. to do. Can I didn't think ahead enough to I didn't either. As out, we were getting to this point, I was like, oh, yeah. Oops. So maybe we put a list in the comments. If you are on YouTube, mm-hmm. we'll put a little list. Yep. There we go. Yep. Yeah. I think that's a good idea. Yeah. Bo, okay. remind us. Yes, Bo. Another job. <laughs> or Gwendolyn. Right. Yes. <laughs> well, Gwendolyn, thanks for coming all the You're way out welcome. here to Custer State Park. This it, was, it was terrible to be here. We've I know. It's just awful. Look at this. Us. we got Lake Sylvan behind us. The sun is shining. We're kayaking. It's gorgeous out here. And yes. This is another amazing place. We just did a. Uh, uh, a podcast on this. Yes, so. we did. Yes, we did. But yeah, you want to take us out? Yeah. So thank you, Gwendolyn. You're welcome. I love being here. Thank you, guys. We it's love awesome having you. that we connected on the road, right? I know. Yep. That's awesome. So we want to thank all of you out there for joining in today and listening to us either through audio podcasts or now watching us on YouTube. Uh, don't forget to click the little subscribe button below if you're on YouTube. And, follow. And follow. Share. Share. 
and uh, follow us out where you find us on podcasts. I can't talk because now I'm looking at Randy and I'm losing my train of thought because you're just so wherever handsome. Wherever you, wherever you, you listen your to your podcasts, we're, we're, there. we're out there. Just find us. We're RV Destinations Podcast. And then check out our website. We've got a ton of great free, F-R-E-E, a travel information out there. So definitely check it out. It's rvdestinationsmagazine.com. And if you'd like to subscribe to the magazine, if you use podcast 20 as the code at checkout, you're going to get 20% off any of our subscriptions. So thank you all for joining us today. We really appreciate it. I'm Randy Beheimer. And I'm Callie Beheimer. And we're here with Gwendolyn Call. Talk to you soon. Be safe. Safe travels, y'all. 